Welcome back to Physics 3740 at the University of Utah. In today's lecture we'll discuss the first particular case that we can solve with the Schrodinger equation and that's the infinite square well um, otherwise known as the one-dimensional particle in a box. So we're just going to do a one-dimensional case here and all of our all of our cases for the next few weeks will be one-dimensional. So here here's the geometric um, situation. Uh, we have on the horizontal axis here we have one spatial dimension x and on the vertical axis we're plotting basically energy and so the box is basically formed by two um, walls or two uh, positions uh, uh, where the potential energy goes to infinity here at zero and here at L okay and uh, and I've just depicted that by sort of this ha this hatching, which just basically means that that uh, that the potential there, potential energy there is infinity, um, which means that it's uh, that it's uh, that the particle can't penetrate into that area, as uh, I'll say again in a second. Okay, so we have a particle of mass m, okay, uh, basically sitting in the well and it's basically bouncing back and forth like this and um, if it gets to the right wall at L then it basically just bounce elas it bounces elastically uh, off if it gets to the left wall it bounces elastically off and if you think about this for a little bit you'll realize that um, the particle in the, cl in the classical case uh, the particle will be if you make a measurement of where the particle is and you make it repeatedly over and over again, you'll basically find that the that the uh, probability of finding the particle in any position x inside the well is equal. So it's a uniform probability distribution. You're equally likely to find the particle in any one place as another. Okay. Okay, so uh, classically and quantum mechanically, the particle is free, what we call free, in between the two uh, walls because um, the potential energy is zero there but it is um, uh, it can't penetrate the walls which means that if we look at the uh, probability uh, density that we discussed in the last lecture the probability density dp dx which is just equal to psi star psi remember psi star is the complex conjugate of the wave function psi um, so dp dx is equal to zero when x for x is uh, less than zero and and x greater than l okay uh, in other words and th that the only way for that to be satisfied rigorously is for the wave function uh, at positions less than zero less than or equal to zero and at positions greater than or equal to l must be equal to zero so the wave function has no amplitude uh, in these in these uh, classically forbidden regions um, here and here okay all right um, and finally, classically, uh, the you can basically give this particle in here. We imagine that we're we're neglecting uh, gravity and we're neglecting uh, we're neglecting any sort of air resistance and that kind of thing. So you have a particle again that's bouncing back and forth. Okay, and uh, and depending on how much energy you give it initially, that is how much. Uh, momentum or speed that you give it when you put it in there, it will basically bounce back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, uh, basically forever in this uh, in this uh, ideal, idealized situation, um, you know, with, with energy E, that's the total, that's the mechanical energy, remember E, when we're talking about the Schrodinger equation, generally speaking, E is the mechanical energy, um, and uh, from if we consider the classical case then we can say that the momentum is equal just to the square root of 2 me okay and the speed is this is the square root of 2 e over m so it bounces back and forth between uh, 0 and L uh, with an uh, with in a state of arbitrary energy that depends on how much energy you give it initially and once you give it that amount of energy again if you can neglect dissipation or any other forces then it will basically just bounce back and forth eternally without with that same amount of energy that is that same momentum and that same velocity okay so that's the that's the how the problem looks when you think about it classically 